Hey there, my name's Gary Sims. Welcome to this week's AI Roundup. So as always, the whole area of AI, machine learning and generative AI is moving along at a blistering pace. So lots to cover this week. Let's start with video creation. Now we're all used to having images created using some of these uh, AI models. So Mid Journey, Dali and so on. You can type in whatever you want. Give me a picture of a duck playing a guitar on the moon. And that is the picture it will generate for you. Now, of course, the next frontier is video. Now, of course, it's quite a challenge with video because you need a sequence of images with a strong correlation between them and the differences to actually reflect the thing the video is trying to show. So if we go back to our uh, guitar playing duck, then of course you want that to show the uh, duck moving in such a way that it looks like it's playing a guitar. Now that's quite an ask, that's quite difficult to do. However, tools are starting to appear. This week I found a tool called Gen2, which is able to create four second video clips. Here's one I created of a frog sitting in water, which I found very impressive. Now, of course, it's not always gonna work. It's a bit hit and miss. Here's a picture I tried of a duck moving across some water and that didn't work out quite so well. However, if you persevere with it, I'm sure you can get some good results. Moving on, Amazon has launched its chatbot. Now, of course, we're used to ChatGPT, Bard, and so on. Now, Amazon haven't gone head to head with things like uh, ChatGPT. Instead, it's released a chatbot that's emphasizing access to its web services, or AWS. So if you have a business that relies on AWS for all of the backend stuff, then this chatbot can help you. Not only can it understand your AWS needs, it can link into all that data that you've got there, including customers and customer reports and support tickets, and it can analyze all that data. It can even create kind of tasks that you need to do, which you can then check off and so on. So it can connect to Salesforce and to Slack and all that kind of stuff. So if you or your business depends heavily on AWS, you might want to go and check out Amazon Q. Now, before we leave Amazon Q, why is it Q? Well, it's not the Q star algorithm that I talked about last week. Others have been talking about from OpenAI. It's definitely not that. Some people say it's to do with Q as in Q from the James Bond movies. Other people say to Q as in from Star Trek. But in either case, it's something new and unique that Amazon have created. Oh, you're so stolid. You weren't like that before the beard. As I said, all of the stuff in AI and generative AI is moving along such a blistering pace that people are still concerned about AI safety. This week is the turn of Eric Schmidt, that's the old CEO and chairman of Google. He's saying that not we haven't got enough safety things in place. And he gives an example that uh, when nuclear weapons were d invented, it was some 18 years before we had our first test ban treaties. And of course, you could say by then it was uh, too late. And he's saying if we don't get the right treaties in place now, if we don't get the right safety guards in place now, then it's going to be too late. He points to the fact that the things are developing so fast that we were thinking that any kind of, you know, AGI or anything approaching AGI was at least two or three decades away. But now he's saying that maybe within the next five years. So we need to get things for safety concerns in place now. Here's a little fun thing I want to throw this week. Since we're talking about AI, all the content, video, and everything that's created by AI, can you tell which of these two pictures of a chicken is the fake one? Here's the first one. And now here's the second one. Do tell me in the comments below which one you think is real and which one is fake. And the final item for this week is I'd like to point you to a video I released on Gary Explains talking about the response times of different models over at OpenAI. Uh, so OpenAI, of course, famous for ChatGPT, but you can also access its models, things like GPT 3.5, GPT 4, GPT 4 Turbo using a programming API. In my example, I did it over Python and they take an amount of time to respond to the queries. So I tested the different models to see which ones were the fastest. If you're interested in that video, it will be linked in the description below. If you want even more details on this week's uh, AI Roundup, do follow the link in the description below that will take you to the written article that gets published weekly as well. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. I really hope you enjoyed this AI Roundup. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And that's it. I'll see you next week.